This time, we will learn how to create a custom scrollable calendar in Swift UI vertical and horizontal. This tutorial is made especially for beginners, and we are going to build everything step by step in a very simple and clean way. You will learn how to display all the months, how to show all the days inside each month, and how to control the scroll position so when the user opens the app, they always see the current month directly. Before we start, I'll first show you the full code. This will make it easier for you to understand how everything connects and also help you reuse it later in your own project. Then we'll break it down part by part and explain each section in a simple and clear way. And if you have any suggestions to make this tutorial even better, feel free to leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts and keep improving the content for you. This line creates a calendar based on the user settings. We needed to work with dates, like getting the day, month, or year from a date, or comparing dates. By saving it in a variable called calendar, we can reuse it easily throughout the code without writing calendar.current every time. Simple, clean, and ready to use. Displayed month. We use it to keep track of the currently displayed month in the calendar. Now let's break it down quickly calendar.current.date components year month from date gets just the year and month from today's date. Calendar.current.date from creates a new date using only the year and month with day set to the start of the month date. Just a safety fallback. If something goes wrong, we use the full current date. We mark it as it states so Swift UI can react and update the view if this month changes like when the user scrolls. In short, this gives us the current month and lets us track it inside the view. Current Visible Month. We use this to store which month is currently visible on the screen when the user scrolls between months. At the start, we set it to date, which means today's date, but later we will update it automatically when the user scrolls. Why do we need this? Because we want to update the month title at the top of the screen to always show the month the user is currently looking at. Simple and clear, it helps us control and update the visible month while scrolling. Month title. Its job is to convert any date into a readable month name as text. In Swift, dates are just values with numbers and time. But in a calendar, we always want to display the name of the month clearly for the user. Inside this function, we start by creating a date formatter. This is a built-in tool in Swift that helps us format a date into text. Then, we tell the formatter which style we want to use. If full is true, we want the full month name, like April. If it's false, we want the short version, like April. Finally, we return the result by asking the formatter to convert the date into text. This is what we display later in our calendar view. This function is called Generate Months. Its job is to create a list of all 12 months for the current year. We need this function because our calendar view should display every month, and this gives us the exact data we need to build it. The process starts by creating an empty array called months. Then we use the calendar to get the current year from the user's device. Next, we use a simple for loop that goes from 1 to 12, representing each month of the year. Inside this loop, we create a new date using the current year and the current month number. If the date is successfully created, we add it to our array. Finally, the function returns the complete list of months. This will allow us to easily show all months inside our vertical calendar. Generate Month Grid. Its job is to create a list of all the days inside a specific month. We need this function because our calendar should display every single day of the month in a grid layout. The function starts by using calendar.dateInterval. This helps us find the start date and the end date of the given month. If for any reason this fails, we simply return an empty array. After that, we use stride. This is a simple way to loop between two dates. We start from the first day of the month and keep adding one day each time. In Swift, one day means adding 86,400 seconds. Finally, we use map to collect all these dates and return them as an array. This array will be used to display 
all the days of the month inside our calendar. Here we are creating a text view to display the name of the current visible month at the top of our calendar. We use our month title function to convert the current visible month date into a readable month name. We set full to true because here we want to show the full name of the month like April, not the short version. Then we apply a bold title font to make the text larger and easier to see. Finally, we add content transition with numeric text. This adds a smooth animation effect when the month changes, so when the user scrolls to a new month, the text updates in a nice and clean way. This part is for displaying the days of the week, like Monday, Tuesday, and so on. I have already created this weekday header view in a previous tutorial, so here I will not explain its code again. If you want to learn how I built this part step by step, you can watch that tutorial. This is the start of a for each loop. We use it to go through all the months we created using the generate months function. For each month in that list, we create a vertical stack that holds the calendar content for that specific month. We use id, self because each month is already a unique date value and Swift UI needs a unique identifier to track each view correctly. This loop will repeat the same layout 12 times, once for each month of the year and build a full vertical scrollable calendar. This line displays the name of the current month inside the calendar section. We use the month title function to convert the month date into a readable name like January or April. Then we apply the bold modifier to make the text stand out. And we add some bottom padding to create space between the month title and the grid of days that comes next. This makes the layout cleaner and easier to read. Here we are creating the grid layout for the days of the month. We use Lazy VGrid because it automatically arranges the items in a grid structure and only loads the views when needed, which helps with performance. We set the columns to seven because every calendar week has seven days. We use GridTTM with flexible size so that all the days can adjust their width equally to fit the available space. We also add a spacing of two between both the columns and the rows to give some space between the days. Inside this grid, we use for each to loop through all the dates of the current month. We get this list of dates from our generate month grid function. This loop will create one view for every day in the month and display it inside the grid. Here we are creating a constant called is current month. This will help us check if the current date we are displaying belongs to the displayed month or not. We use the calendar.isDate function to compare two dates. The first date is the current day in the loop, and the second one is displayed month, which represents the selected month in the calendar. We add to granularity to a month because we only care about comparing the month and year, not the exact day. If both dates belong to the same month, its current month will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. This is very useful because we will use it later to style the days. For example, days that belong to the current month will look normal, while days from previous or next months will look with a different style. This text view is responsible for displaying the day number for each date inside our calendar. We get the day number using calendar.component with day. This extracts only the day part from the full date and shows it as text. We set the font size to 15 to keep the number clean and readable. Then we give it a flexible frame that expands horizontally with a minimum height of 45 to make sure all the day cells have the same size. For the color, we check if this day belongs to the current displayed month or not. If it does, we show it with the primary color. If it doesn't, we show it in gray to make it look less important. Finally, we give each day a background. If the day belongs to the current months, we show it with our custom background color. If not, we use a light gray background. And to make it look modern and smooth, we add rounded corners to the background using rect with a corner radius of eight. This part adds an overlay to each day in the calendar. The overlay is a rounded rectangle with a stroke, which means just a border without a background. We use rounded rectangle with a corner radius of eight to match the shape of the day's background. Then we apply a stroke with a line width of one to keep the border thin and clean. For the color of the border, we use calendar.isDateIn today. This checks if the current date in the loop is today's date. If it is, we use the primary color to highlight it. If not, 
We make the border clear, clear, so it's invisible. Finally, we add a small padding of one to give the stroke a little space inside the background and avoid it touching the edges directly. We start here with Scroll View Reader. This is a Swift UI tool that lets us programmatically scroll to a specific view. It gives us access to a proxy which we can later use to control the scroll position from the code. In our case, we use it to make sure the calendar scrolls to the current month automatically when the app opens. This improves the user experience by bringing them straight to the current month without needing to scroll manually. Then, each month has a unique ID using do.e month. This is necessary because when we scroll using the proxy, Swift UI needs to know exactly which view to scroll to, and the ID is how it identifies it. And finally, inside the onAppear modifier, we use proxy.scrollto to scroll to the current displayed month. We add a short delay using dispatch queue to give Swift UI time to build the layout. Without this delay, the scroll might happen too early and not work as expected. This part is very important. This is how we track which month is currently in the top of the screen while the user is scrolling. We start by using Geometry Reader. This gives us access to the position and size of the current view. In our case, we are using it to check the position of each month while scrolling. Inside Geometry Reader, we use color.clear because we don't want to show anything visually. We only want to read the position. Then we use on change to detect whenever the maxi value changes. Maxi means the position of the bottom edge of this month's view in the global screen. After that, we get the height of the screen using uiscreen.main.bounds.height. And here comes the smart part. We check if the maxi of this month is close to the top of the screen. If it is, we update current visible month to this month, and we do that with animation so the title at the top changes smoothly. This is what makes the month name at the top always follow the month the user is currently viewing while scrolling. This is an alternative version of the calendar view using horizontal scrolling instead of vertical. The structure is almost the same. The only major difference is that we use a horizontal scroll view with an H stack to lay out the month side by side. We also use dot scroll target layout and scroll target behavior, do you aligned, to control the scroll position and alignment smoothly. Everything else, like the month title, the weekday header, and the grid of days, works just like in the vertical version. You can use whichever layout fits your app better depending on the user experience you want to create.